Basket Care Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full-body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So, so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. everyone and welcome to the AccuCare High School Football Preview Show, uh, Monmouth County Edition, presented by the Shore Football Report. Today we will talk Wall Crimson Night Football with first year head football coach and legendary head coach, in my eyes, Coach, Coach Ed Guerrero. Coach, welcome back to coaching and uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it, Rob. Thank you. Awesome. Um, we were talking before we went on the air. I remember the text message. I sent you, I sent all these legendary Hall of Fame coaches. I wanted to get you all on a talk show. And then you messaged me, I'm not retired. <laughs> I love, and I kept that secret from everybody. Um, I, I only told Coach Versillo, and he goes, good, he needs to be back. We need him back on the sidelines. And 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 it's great that you're back. You, you know, great that you're at war. But it's also b- great that you're back with the short conference because you know we're a very tight short conference. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome, it's Coach. Great to be back. Coach, we're going to talk a lot about you and Wall in a second, but I want to brag about two things that happened real big in the short football report. One, we now have a sponsor, AccuCare in Bri- in um, in uh, Brick. She's the owner and founder is Pam Anthony. And you know, as well as I do, that it's important to get those athletes healthy and stay in shape, get on the field, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. She's awesome. The big part of the game. She's got state-of-the-art equipment there. She wants to be involved in all the programs and and be a uh, a nice source for any athlete or coach that needs kids to to get better and excel on the the football field. Would you mind if I gave uh, a special prop out to, to, to Pam? Yeah. Okay, I had my knee replaced almost two years ago. Right, and that's where I rehabbed, and she did an wow. outstanding job. Wow. Outstanding. My knee is almost one hundred percent. So now, what's your forty time? Uh, probably an eight one. <laughs> <laughs> it improved. It improved. But here's the thing: I can run on it if I had to. I yeah. could run on. It. Awesome. So you were yeah. with her, so you know the yeah. state of your equipment. She has. Um, She's the best. It's not just the equipment, it's the service that they provide. Oh, that's awesome, man. She's gonna she listens to every one of the shows and I know she's gonna like that that plug right there. But there's a lot of great stories about her and her staff, what she has, and she's all in with the athletes and, and she wants to be involved and she's a big fan of short yeah. conference football. She really is. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Coach, also Scott Stump is back after a long, long period he was gone. So uh, I wanted the best. I got the dream team. It was bigger news than LeBron James. We got Scott Stump, and he's excited. Um, and he, you know, just talking to him the other day, and he's spitting out names. And he mentioned, he goes, Guerrero's back. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, he's got his pen ready to write and do all this. <laughs> so you're going to have him on your sidelines probably in a lot of games because you do have a lot of big games you have upcoming here. So Scott Stump 
and AccuCare is a lot that we added to the Shore Football Report. And we just want to make sure that we are at the same level as you guys. You guys demand the best. I have to give you the best. So here we are. There you go. Speaking of best, I want to I want to talk a little bit about you, and then you talk about yourself and your resume because real interesting, Coach. This is your 14th season overall. You were a Hall of Fame coach in the short conference, 109 and 35, one state title, seven division championships, and uh, what a great hire it is for Wall. I know you're excited. You are rejuvenated. Um, t- take us back to when you first started coaching, though. I want to know exactly how you started becoming coaching, your steps that led up to Wall as a head coach. So let's hear so, your resume. Uh, basically, um, I, I started – I graduated my last year playing football was 82, 83. I was coaching the following season at my uh, old high school, Wagner High School on Staten Island. And uh, I coached there for two years. And then I went to Wagner College for a couple of years as a running back coach. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I left Wagner. I became a New York City. I was a New York City school teacher for a uh, for three years, I left to become a New York City police officer. Uh, so that kind of ended my college football career there. And then I went back to Wagner High School. Uh, once uh, I got my hours settled in with the police department and I could work my hours around it, mm-hmm. I went back and uh, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, Coach Paterzo, who was my head coach in high school. Oh yeah, He's uh, the winningest coach in the history of New York City. I don't know exactly how many wins it is, but it's well over 200. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to work with him. I got to work with Walt Hamline at Wagner College, uh, one of the winningest coaches in uh, in college football. Um, and so I've been a, lucky. I've been around some some really good people, really good people. What? Then uh, when I retired from the police department, I, I came out here in 97, and uh, Steve Bush hired me as an assistant, and he's another great football guy. Um, I was basically uh, out of work for maybe a week or two, and Steve called me up. We have mutual friends at uh, Syracuse University, and uh, I told he he goes, I heard you moving into the to Manalpin. I said, yeah. He goes, I need a coach. So we met, and wow. uh, I was at Manalpin from '97 until '19. That's awesome, Coach. That I mean, my question to you is, why does everybody that moves down here from Staten Island know you? Uh, everybody. That could be that could be good. That could be bad. <laughs> It's so funny. I went to a car dealership in, in Monmouth County, and he goes, do you, know, do you know Ed Guerrero? Yeah, and I guess you coached his son. And I'm like, wow, everybody knows you down here. It's incredible. All from, you know, either New York or Northern yeah, Shore yeah, Conference. It's, it's, uh, it's a small world. My kids always tell me, wherever we go, somebody knows me. <laughs> so, co- say, you know what? It could be bad. It could be good. You don't know. <laughs> I, I love how the connection of – how you became a head coach here at Wall. So you were, yeah, Coach Paterzo, I think he did the Governor Bowl. Yeah, forever. Yep, he did the Governor's Bowl forever. Yep. He's, uh, he was the president of New York State Coaches yeah. Association. Uh, yeah, he's a legend in New York. Yeah, I met him a couple times doing that game, with, making yeah. that trip to New York and uh, New Jersey and New York, getting together and making that big game of the Governor Bowl. Coach Heimlin, a great coach at, at Wagner. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> And so Steve Bush got you got you started in the shore, huh? Yeah, Steve's a great guy, great football mind. Uh, he was with me for I was with him for uh, three years, and then he left to go to uh, Syracuse. You know, and then from Syracuse went to the NFL with the Dolphins, and uh, he's had a great career, Steve. Coach, you had a great career in Manalpin, and I want to talk briefly about Manalpin because, I mean, you were one of the most consistent. I, I always say it's easier to get to the top. It's harder to stay at the top. Right. And right. you had your programs always getting to that top. And I, I mean, I had a lot of respect for you doing that. And at a group five school like, like Manalpin, um, tell me a little bit about your, 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 your times at Manalpin with the football program. Uh, basically, you know, early on, I, I, I was still uh, running around. I had my own security business. I was uh, doing a lot of things. But once, um, pretty much a little bit after 9-11, I didn't want to go to, to Manhattan anymore. I was kind of done with that. Uh, I felt like I did my time. Uh, when I started working in Manalapan High School, 
besides coaching, that's when things started to change because now my eyes are on the kids all day long. Yeah. Um, we um, instituted, you know, a strength and conditioning off-season program a long time ago, and I think that's the foundation uh, that built the program that we built at, at Manal. And, you know, uh, we started the first day we came back from Christmas vacation, and we went right through until we started up again uh, in summer camp. They got a week off for uh, spring break. They got a week off for Fourth uh, of July. And but other than that, we went right through. And I think being together all of that time in the weight room—that's where a lot of bonding goes. You know, coach, you know, there's no more, there's no more going away to camp. There's no more time to bond. It's no. in that weight room. And if you don't have that, uh, you're never going to be good. Yeah, but the thing about you, again, for me, being I was at Born Again, so we were miles, miles away. The thing about your program is you always had the culture. They were hardworking, tough kids. They were tough, but they were hardworking. That's a big difference. You know, having- and, and, you know we, we always said it. We were going to be a blue-collar team. Yeah. You know, we're going to be a tough, hard-nosed, blue-collar team, and we're not going to hurt ourselves with penalties, and we're going to always give ourselves a chance to win. I remember college coaches, that they would come here and say, where are you going? We're going to this school, that school. And when they mentioned your school, they would always say, those kids, he's always got somebody. They're working their tails off in there. There's somebody that they have every year. And they may not have talked to you because you had the reputation that we do it right and you got dudes because of how hard they work. So that's a credit to you. Uh, and, I, and Coach, you've, again, seven championships, division championships. You won the state title there. Um, getting to play at the metal, uh, not metal Rutgers. Rutgers. Did you? My question to you is: Would you rather play the state championship game at Rutgers, or would you rather play in your home school stadium? I I like uh, the experience of going to Rutgers, but if I had my choice, I would love to be at home in a high school stadium because if you take the you know the ten thousand people that go to Rutgers right. between both teams, yeah. It's a drop in a bucket. It seems like the place is empty, yeah. but you drop that ten thousand into a freaking high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stadium, you know, it's rocking. Right. It's well, rocking. maybe, maybe, especially home, a home game. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys were at at that level for quite a bit. I mean, how far of a drive was it from the Alpha to Rockers? It's about a forty-five minute ride. You know, it, here's the only the only um, you know I would say drawback from going is that what you do. Week in and week out, your game day preparation, you get, you know how coaches are. Yeah. You know, we're sticklers for staying by the minute. Mm -hmm. You throw that all out the window when you go to Rutgers. <laughs> because, you know, when you're done warming up, is the game over that's before you? You know? Yeah. Like they might be going into overtime and you're done with your warm up. Now what do you do? Yeah. You sit yeah. down, you start up again. When do you give your uh, pregame speech? <laughs> and they tell you where you're going so you're not as much control of your you no, control. Stuff. no control they'll come over and say we got to go and whatever you're doing you got to drop it and we got to go yeah you know and uh I, I try to go over the scenario with the kids as many times as possible so when it did happen they wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. but even when you go over it the first time they run through the tunnel and they, they look up at the jumbo trial they see themselves on the jumbo trial even the young kids are never going to get into the game, and they're carrying like water bottles, right? Gatorade jugs and stuff like that. You know, they're all uh, excited. Coach, I, I know what you're saying because we played our state championship game at Rowan, and it, they did the same thing. And my coaches were just as ill prepared when they said, "We got to go." What do you mean, my book? No. And no, they don't like it. Was these conversations you're having that you normally wouldn't have before a game because nobody was prepared to go right now. You know, yeah. oh, I got to go to the bathroom, coach. I got to what? Like, <laughs> but it's a nice problem to have, though. When absolutely. You, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Coach, but, speeding. I would still rather be home. <laughs> yeah, speeding up now to where you are right now. And I, I know I gave you a, a text when you got hired, and boy, you were excited. You, I remember you saying, uh, ready to get to work and all that absolutely. stuff. And, you know, now you're at wall. Um, I mean, you bring a wealth of experience and all that stuff. And, you were you took at what was it two years off yes two years off do you think those two years off gave you even more juice oh uh, yeah absolutely absolutely well the first year the first year is kind of a wash because that was like the height of covid and yeah. nobody knew 
what was going to happen, if we're going to have a season, not have a season, shortened season. And again, when you like to control everything and you can't control everything that's going on and Zoom meetings, that was a good time for me to step back. Uh, but year two, when uh, when everything calmed down during the summer and there was nothing really going on and, and, and it was a real season, uh, that's when I was really getting the itch. So uh, I, I knew that uh, it was still in me. So you avoided the COVID. Uh, I, yeah, I guess so. Wow, you, <laughs> I guess you, so. that was smart. You, you know, you, you took that pause. It was during that COVID era, which coaches were yeah. going crazy. It goes away. You come back. Awesome. I mean, there was there was some other issues, like I told you. I had my knee replaced. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, so uh, th- it was a couple of things, but that was a part of it. Yeah. But the thing is now, um, I mean, all this experience you have, and now you're even more. You're like a rookie coach again in your head, coaching at a new school. Yep. You know, probably the same expectations because your expectations were high at Manalp, and it really was. Um, meeting new people in the fan, uh, people in the community, it's got to be exciting. It's got to be exciting. Oh, it's, it's a great, it's a great community. It's a great school and it's a great bunch of kids. It's a really good bunch of kids. Awesome. Coach, we got a lot to talk about um, now about wall. You ready to talk wall football? Let's go. Let's, coach, I'm going to whip this thing off right now. It's a mask. And I know you didn't wear the mask on the sidelines for two years, but we don't want to talk about pods. We don't want to talk about COVID. We want normal, normal, back to normal. Now, the poor seniors, and let's talk about them mostly. They have ha- not had a normal off-season workout in two years. So after their freshman football season was their last normal off-season. So they haven't been able to see the seniors in their programs go through, you know, you know your your off-season workouts, seven on sevens, all that stuff. So you're in a perfect spot now. You can You're in here. You don't have to reteach your program. You have to teach your off-season program. Tell us what your off-season program is going to look like for now on at Wall. Uh, basically, as soon as they come back from Christmas vacation and uh, that first couple of days of January, we bring them in, we test them in the bench, the squat, and, and the power clean. Good. And uh, we have a program that starts the following week after we test them. And we'll go an eight-week cycle. They'll get retested again. They'll be three times they're tested um, until we get to June when we when we finish. And then we come back after June uh, and finish out the summer. Uh, so they don't stop. They don't stop. We uh, go just strictly lifting for the first couple of months. And then once the spring comes, we add in the uh, conditioning and the agility stations. And we kind of split them up half in the gym. Once we get in the gym, when mm-hmm. you know everybody else is out of the gym, once we get in, we go half the team in the weight room lifting, the other half in the uh, in the gym doing agilities <laughs> and conditioning. And like I said before, I think that's the time where they really get a chance. That's when you build your program and they get a chance to bond with each other and, and sweat hard work through the cold of the winter, through the warmth of the, of, of the spring into the heat of the summer. Um, and they gradually get to, to grow with each other. And they learn that football uh, is supposed to be a grind. You know, it's not – it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would play it. You know, it's a grind and, and, and uh, you have to be good with uh, basically time management. Uh, it helps you with your time management skills. Uh, it, it teaches you to be goal oriented. Uh, you know, this is what I bench. This is what I want to bench. This is what I squat. This is what I want to squat uh, and achieve goals, you know, and, and that's what that's what life is all about. Mm-hmm. You know, we should all have goals. and We all got to try to attain them. So that's the, the stuff that we're trying to, you know, Give to them. I, listen, I think Wall was a great program to begin with. Uh, these guys, they worked out in the off season. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not doing anything different than they already did. But this is something that I really believe in, and I think it's my conviction in it uh, that really uh, grabbed their attention. And you'll have, of course, with the college recruiting coaches coming in that in in the off season, senior guys, that will happen. And seven on sevens, I know that you do a lot too. Will be also big, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, seven on seven is something that the uh, wall kids hadn't done before. Um, you know, they might have done it with just a, another team here and there, but going to the seven on sevens uh, is something new to them, and that's something 
that we've been doing at Manalpin for forever. You know, it's a good chance to see the kids compete. You want to see how guys do, not just when they're doing well, but when they're doing bad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And how they, they react to both situations. And again, it's another long day, and it's another opportunity for those guys to get stuck together. And, and again, team bonding is uh, very important. I, I I enjoyed watching you guys in the seven on seven uh, this summer, mostly at Monmouth. And seeing you for the first time with your players, coaching, you know, yeah. outside yeah. of your program, and you're back, you're back, man. You, know, <laughs> you had it back, and and I like some of the schemes. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, later, but um, yeah, I mean, you guys look like you were working hard. I couldn't tell which what which guy was which because you all yeah. were wearing the same colored jerseys and all that. But um, yeah, being there at seven on seven in front of the Monmouth coaches is something that you want to see in the future too. Yeah, right? no, listen, any chance we can get exposure for our kids, uh, we want to get that, you know. That's, you know, our, the, the biggest part of our job is to, <laughs> besides making them, uh, you know, great young men, is to try to get them in college too. Good. Back to normal. I guess it's going to be work your tails off with goal-oriented lifts and, and bonding in the weight room, college coaches, seven-on-sevens, and then winning football on the football field, right? That that's that sounds like a good plan. That's that's usually the uh, that's the way it goes. <laughs> you know, in football, you just can't roll the balls out in, uh, in August 10th. You got to do all of this just to lead up to that. All right, coach. Let's hear your uh, 2022 football coaching staff at Wall. So our defense coordinator is uh, Justin Fomando, um, and um, he's going to coach the defensive line. My outside linebacker coach is Bill Smith Sr. Uh, the defensive back coaches will be two two guys, uh, Mike Kinsella and uh, Pete Ottaviano. One will have the safeties and one will have the, the corners. Um, coach Fomando's been with uh, – Justin's been with me before. I've been out been, we've been together for a long time. Uh, we know the scheme together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about having, bringing him in. On the offensive side of the ball, uh, I'm bringing an old time out of retirement. Tommy Gallio is going to be the offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, we had our uh, offensive coordinator from uh, from an Alpin uh, come <laughs> with us, but David Vanzo at the last uh, second kind of had to step down. He's a, a new dad, and he's got other responsibilities, but he's going to stick around and help out. Good. But uh, Tommy's going to come in and take over. Uh, it's the same offense uh, that we had at an Alpin, a multiple eye. Um, our offensive line coach is going to be Chris Rogers and Joe Tetley. Joe Tetley has been with me for uh, over 20 years, uh, so he's back. And uh, Bill Smith Sr. again will be the uh, tight ends coach. Uh, Gene Scott's going to help him. He's a volunteer, uh, a Wall graduate and a Monmouth University graduate. And we're hoping that he doesn't get a chance to coach with us because we're hoping he hooks up with an NFL team. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're wishing him all the best of luck. And um, – the receivers will be uh, Mike Kinsella and Pete Ottaviano will do the receivers. I have the running backs and the fullbacks. Uh, Tommy Gallio will have the, the quarterbacks. And Pete uh, Ottaviano will be the special teams coordinator. Interesting, Coach. Um, good. Tom Gallio, i seen him at the 7-on-7. Seven seven. So yeah, exactly. I didn't recognize him. So I'm, I'm walking by in my Hawaiian shirt, and he goes, Coach, what's up? I'm like, oh, Tom, what are you doing? He goes, I'm coaching. I said, where? And then he told me. Yeah. And I said, is there a chance that we may see power this year? I'm walking by. He goes, oh, there's a great chance. You're going to see power this year. <laughs> yeah. Tom's a great guy. Coach with him at least. He learned a lot from him. I really did. And yeah. I know he's heavy into his zone schemes and loves his play actions. He loves his play actions. But he's very technically sound with um, bringing that college experience that he was at Kane Uni- University. Yeah. yeah, he was a coordinator for a while. Yeah, and Justin Fomando, high-energy guy with a lot of uh, experience. He was a head coach, uh, was with you at Manalpin as well as Tom, too. So you got some uh, guys that you feel comfortable with, with a wealth of knowledge. That's got to be exciting, too. Yeah, we kind of feel like we got the old band back together. You Good. Know? So everybody's kind of uh, all rejuvenated and all juiced up and ready to go, and uh, we're excited. That's good. That's a good staff, Coach. Uh, a lot to look forward to this year. Good. A lot of experience. Let's put it that way. Okay, Coach, to the left, 
is the Wall Crimson Knights football schedule. And to the right is the American Division or the SEC or the Black and Blue Division, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll talk about that after you give us a little spin on your your first year schedule. Uh, well, it's as tough as it gets. Yeah. You know, if you take away the big five, you know, up in uh, North Jersey, and, you know, they have to play each other. I would say this schedule is as tough as anybody's schedule in the state of New Jersey. Great. It, it's a, it is the SEC of, uh, of divisions, that's for sure. Agree. Coach, looking at, I mean, you open up probably, you know, the team that finished number one in the shore last year probably will be a preseason number one this year. So your first game is against a team that, Potentially, you could be a state champion too in the parole field too. So, but it's home, on a positive thing. So you're playing home. Is it important for you to start the season home, or you didn't care? Uh, I mean that part doesn't matter. But considering it's going to be their third game and our first, yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, I'm happy that it's home. I'm happy that it's home. Right. And then looking right down on that schedule, you know, and, and you're in the meat grinder. You yeah. Right to, you know, Rumson, who's uh, Always has a great program. Um, Middletown South is probably, you know, one of the best programs year in and year out in the state. Mm -hmm. Always good. Uh, they, the difference with them is, you know, they have a real if they have a real good running back or a real good quarterback, they go from being a really good team to an excellent team. You know, so uh, they're always tough, uh, always well coached, and uh, I mean, after those three, you know. The rest of the way is no joke either. So Howell is going to be much improved this year. Right. Donald Catholic is one of the better teams in the state. Colts Neck is much improved. Uh, we got that little game with Manalpin. We're going to call that the little <laughs> Civil War. Me and Coach Lepore are calling it the Civil War there. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and then Manasquan, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of a traditional uh, – Thanksgiving game, uh, you know, Manalp and we had Marlboro for all those years, and then the game, we lost that game, and I, and I thought it was important to be a part of a, a Thanksgiving game. Yeah, that I mean, top. We, we probably could talk for three hours on every game on that schedule, but, yeah. you know, that's a good overview with that. Coach, I took a little notes because I'm laughing. The Civil War, let's look to the right. Did you ever notice the helmets of Man oh, yeah. Manalp and Wall? I mean, can it get any more similar? Listen, when Coach Lepore is on the other sideline and he's seeing the other view of the W and wall, he's looking at the M. <laughs> <laughs> you just turn it upside down. Yeah. It's the M, so it, uh, yeah, you know that, what? The that, longer I'm around the wall, kids, it's kind of a mirror image of each other. Uh, same kind of uh, tough, hard-nosed, blue-collar kids also. You know, same kind of kids. Right. So that, the helmets fit perfectly. <laughs> that 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 is – Wow, the, the helmets are even similar. Wow, that's that. You got to be comfortable with that. The helmets are almost the same. You know what? You feel good. You feel oh, good. Yeah, absolutely, coach. That division, the the athletic, the, the ads put, you know, the top type of programs. You know, competitive, and they've all kind of clump them into divisions. Every division is competitive within each division. You look sure. at this one right here. Huh. Not only are your playoff team, any one of these teams, you would not be shocked if they won a state championship, too. So, I mean, Red Bank Catholic, Donovan Catholic, Middletown South, Manalapin, Rumson, and of course, the other teams are saying, Wall. I mean, it's this is a, a legitimately black and blue division. If, if you could survive. And, and, and be healthy at the end of the year when you get to the playoffs, you will be battle-tested, that's for sure. It's funny how you said that because I, I hope the ADs are listening because, yes, you're putting in state playoff games every single week. There needs to be a little bit of a breathing room for teams because you could be so banged up going into a season, um, into the playoffs, and you know other teams from other areas might have a bye week or – they're playing in a smaller school. There is no breathing room here at all. No, no. And, and you know what? I mean, I, unfortunately, that's what football is all about, right? When you get to the end of the year, sometimes it's not the uh, the best team. It's the healthiest team. You, know, you see it in the NFL, uh, college, everywhere. You know, it's going to be the same with us here. In this, you, you get through this, 
and, and you're relatively healthy, I mean, everybody will be dinged up a little bit, but if you're relatively healthy, uh, you'll be battle tested. You'll be ready to go. But the key is to get through it. Coach, when you were gone, uh, now maybe you were still around, when they developed these power divisions, uh, as a coach, I kind of requested that I think that we should make two all-division teams. And at, at the time, everybody looked at me, why? Because, and I'll tell you why, because the American division, their sec, your second-team players could just as well be second-team all-shore or third-team all-shore. Because there's some good – I mean, you might have four of the top quarterbacks one year or four of the top DNs, and when you do your all division, and if somebody's got to be second, those guys still should get recognition for all sure. And this is the division that really stamped, stamped it why we do it, what we do in the, uh, the uh, short Oh, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. If, if you look at it, if you're a running back and you're playing RBC, Middletown South, Rumson, Donovan Catholic, and you rush for over a thousand yards. You're you're a real running back. I mean, you're legit. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're a thousand yard rusher in that division, mm-hmm. you know that's something to hang your hat on. I love when somebody goes, you know, you know, I would love to run behind the lineman of, let's say, this team. Yes, but remember, on the other side of the ball, they're exactly. the lineman of that team or the lineback. So it kind of like equates the same a little bit. But there's good football all around in this division. Great coaching um, and a lot of high expectations, like your program, uh, too. Right, coach? Yeah, I'm sure. If you, when you interview every one of these coaches, everybody, uh, you know, thinks that their team is going to be uh, uh, have a chance at the end to win a championship, and they should. I mean, this is a quality, quality division, and every one of these teams is a quality program. They're just not good teams this year. Year in and year out, uh, you know, they're good football teams. I'm, and that's what makes you uh, a good program. Now, we're all anxious to know, what are you running offensively, defensively? Come on. If you don't know what we're running <laughs> offensively, <laughs> your head's been in the sand. Everybody knows that yeah. we're going to be uh, a 21 pro-style team with a tight end, fullback, and a tailback. We're going to be a power scheme, a gap scheme team. Uh, we're going to try to run the ball. And uh, and then when you come down in a box and defend the run, we're going to try to throw it over your head and play action. That's there's no secret. No. That's what we do, and uh, everybody knows. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we're excited to get it going again. Right. And then defensively, we'll be a three-four team. Um, we've been a three-four, but we move the front to a. It'll be an even front sometimes. The way we move strong and weak, but uh, predominantly a three-four team. Yeah, I think that was a stupid question that he asked you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had it. If I, if I would have just said we're going to be a, 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 an air raid zone read team, you would have just lost your mind. I would have got a lot of phone calls. <laughs> they were calling you bluff. All right, Coach, I love this part. I added this this year in our talks was top positional groups in each program. I did a lot of study on everybody. Dissected wall, dissected you, too. I want to see your philosophy and what you got coming back and see if it works. Here's my take on your strengths of your – your units of your players. I think your offense with your offensive line, that's coming from me that I think your offensive line is your strength. And let me tell you why you have Carr, Langworthy, Sasso and Rogers, not bad for coach Gallio running the offense, right? Four dudes oh, up front. Cool. Am I, am I close? That's a really good start. Yeah. <laughs> coach, tell me something about that unit, the O-line. Um, they're, uh, they're a good group. They're athletic. They, they move well. Uh, the first thing we noticed when we watched some games last year that uh, they did a really good job of pulling. And in the gap scheme like we have, uh, pulling is important. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're big, strong kids. So they can move people off the ball, but they're athletic enough to pull and, and, and get up on linebackers on second-level guys. So we're excited about it. Yeah, I mean, talking to some coaches in college, too, they, they echo those names, too. Like I'm like, yeah. wow. So that was kind of easy for me having four names like that. I like that young young kid too, Rogers, a real big, three hundred pound aggressive. That's all he is. Aggressive, you know. Like he's going to be, uh, he's going to be a good one. Going to be a good one Absolutely. on defense. I think again your trenches. I think your D lineman. Uh, you have uh, to add to the mix. You have Sanders, a senior. You have Langworthy, Carr, and probably Sasso is going to play here or there on the yep. D line. 
I think yeah. that's your strength. I know you got good linebackers too that you're excited about, but I think your D linemen or your unit is your, your top unit. Uh, I mean, listen, it doesn't matter what level of football you're at. Uh, you know, you have to be good up front on both sides of the ball. And I think uh, that's our starting point. And uh, we'll build from there. Now, you, know, you know how they say uh, you have built from the inside out? Yeah. We, we got a nice foundation oh. that uh, we inherited, and uh, um, we're excited about that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And then special teams, I mean, I, I was really – and I don't think a lot of people know about this, but I think that your special teams, you have a freshman, since a, a, a kid I keep hearing about, a freshman by the name of Heath Reiner. And you're probably wondering how I knew that name, but his name's out there. I heard he's an outstanding kicker. So I think that your kicking game, if this is true, that you have a freshman, Heath Reiner, then I think that's your strength, your kicking game. Yeah, um, I think um, he's got. He's going to be okay. He's going to be all right. Uh you know, everybody looks good in warm-ups. Everybody looks good when there's no pressure on him. But I think that he has the kind of personality and the temperament uh, to not be bothered by being in a, a, a big game on a Friday night under the lights. Uh, I think that takes a special young man, and, and I think he's got those qualities. He's got a good leg. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's been taught well, and uh, we're going to use him. Coach, I disagree. Everybody looks good in warm-ups. Did you ever see me kick a field goal? <laughs> Coach, it could be in front of a thousand or in front of nobody. I'm still missing it. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but but that kid right there, I heard he's got a big big upside to him at, at kicker. I, I'm excited. You know, coming from an album, we think we were known as like kicker. You would every year we had a scholarship uh, kicker, uh, and um, he fits in those mold in that mold with those guys. So uh, I'm excited. Looking forward to the extra points, not field goals, right? Just yeah. absolutely yes, <laughs> Coach. Let's hear some of your top returners, some of those sleeper or under the radar type guys that we're going to hear about. I know you're excited. You've thrown a lot of names to me the last couple of weeks, and uh, let's just hear about some of the players. Well, we got over you know the offensive lineman and defensive lineman. Like I said, that's going to be the nuts and bolts of our whole team. I'm excited about them. But then uh, we're going to have a little quarterback competition uh, with Andrew Olson and Anthony Garts. They're they both are real good football players. Um, I think that Anthony uh, is the kind of kid that if he doesn't turn out to be the quarterback, he'll probably be the running back. He'll probably be the Sam linebacker. Uh, he's got a lot of energy, and uh, he's one of the leaders on the team. Uh, but also, also brings uh, different intangibles at the quarterback position. Uh, he's a quiet leader, uh, and uh, he's got a calm way about him, and uh, he's a very intelligent kid. So. We're going to have a little competition there, which I'm excited about. Uh, one of the receivers they'll be throwing a ball to, Shea Brennan, yeah. uh, had a very good seven-on-seven uh, uh, seven summer. Um, you can see he's going to be one of our go-to guys. He's got good hands. He's got good speed. So we're excited about him. And um, I think we got a bunch of, of running backs that if they just run behind an offensive line and, and, and try not to hit a home run every time and just stay behind the offensive line and let them do their job, I think we'll be okay. It's going to kind of be like by committee. Like I said, uh, guards could be one of the running backs. Uh, we have uh, another senior, Mike Fumarola, who, who could be a real good one. Unfortunately for him, he's been uh, nicked up a little bit. Uh, but uh, And then we have two sophomores, uh, Tony Cradle and Mason Adam, uh, two hard-nosed, tough kids that, that uh, kind of run downhill. Mm -hmm. We're excited about those two. So we're excited at the receiver with Shea. We're excited at the quarterback with the competition. And we think we have about three or four running backs that we can get in and out of there. And a bunch of the guys uh, that are playing defense will all kind of split that fullback, H-back spot. Uh, Mozika and, uh, and Chris Coach, is going to be one of them. Let me interject for one thing. The fullback position, because I remember you and in, 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 because you were always on those all-star committees, and you were one of those guys that always stuck up for what position? The, the fullbacks, fullback. right? In our offense, that's an unsung hero. You know, Coach, that's huge. Guy who's unselfish and gives his body up for everybody else. Can't run two back power without the fullback, no. right? So that'll kind of be like a three headed monster with uh, with Chris Mozika, yeah, uh, Kason Sanders, and uh, and Noah Rodriguez. You know, so we're excited about that and. Um, we have another running back slash 
fullback. He can play both, but he's a big, strong kid. Alex Timms that we're excited about. And uh, and then defensively, like we said, we got a bunch of linebackers. We've got two linebackers returning, inside linebackers that were starters, and uh, Rodriguez and uh, Donahue, two good size inside kids, smart. They've already picked up the scheme. And um, I think with them, and then you put – on the outside, if you put the uh, the older guys, you know, we move some guys around. Like I said, uh, Gartz is going to come down from safety and play outside linebacker. And uh, Mozika will be healthy. He'll be the other outside linebacker. I think we'll be good up front. I think that'll be a good starting point. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, a lot of familiar names, a lot of names that I heard from a distance that guys, uh, you know, been working their tail off. Um, but a lot of people are excited about, you know, the players you have in the program and the direction you're going. Um, you Exciting time, Coach. I'm jealous. I'm uh, jealous. Let me, let me tell you, it, it is a very good – it's a very good town. It's a good program. Right. You know, I inherited some real good football players, you know, so uh, we're excited. And you surrounded them with great, great coaches that you've been around for a long time. So, I mean, you guys are familiar with each other, so you're not feeling, you know – the next guy out, you know what they're thinking before they're thinking it, probably. Yeah, yeah. Listen, staff, we've been around forever, so we we know exactly uh, how the pitch is supposed to look on the field, and uh, we're getting that picture right now. We we we're, we like what we're seeing. I can see Coach Fermando saying he wants to add this type of stunt, or Tom Gallo saying I want to add this tag to our scheme, and whoa, ease up. That's we'll get to it. But you're all on the same page, which is important for Coach. Yeah. I think we all understand that we got to crawl before we can run, and we got to, you know, walk before we can run. Right. Walk and walk and run. Coach, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, you know, me personally, I'm excited that you're back, and not just me. I should say a lot of people are excited to have you back. We're we're better in the short conference that you're on the sideline. You are. You were not very good at a, um, not retired. Um, let's say, you know. Um, vacated coach whatever you want to call there you it go. but you know <laughs> but when you're the news came out that you were the head coach boy the text everybody was pumped and excited you have a great fan base around you and now you're going to bring it to wall and it's you're 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 going to definitely grow with more um you know people on your side as we as we speak so thank you for coming on the show you need anything let me know we'll be covering you guys throughout the year um, and you're going to be in a lot of big games. So you'll have probably St- Scott Stump on there for a lot, a lot of those games. Listen, Rob, thank you, and I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Coach. Same here. Take thank care. Thank you. All right. Now I have two outstanding football players from Wall High School, a senior and a junior, right? So I got to the left. Let me introduce you, and then we'll get, we'll get going. To the left, I have outstanding senior Offensive guard, defensive end, Billy Carr. Good. Right. And right in the middle, we have a junior offensive guard, defensive tackle, Benny Sasso. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. We're gonna thanks. keep. We're gonna make this quick. We're gonna get right to the point. Um, and I want to have fun. Just got done talking with Coach Guerrero. Boy, oh boy, is he excited about this season and the players on his on his team. Really, yeah. Uh, I have a couple. I have five questions. I have to ask you guys, and then I know more about your football program. And it's stuff that a reporter, me personally, would love to to know what it is because I want to know what gets every team clicking. And I think these are important questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's have fun. First question, who's the funniest dude in the football program? Who's the? That's my first question. Who's the funniest guy on the team? Who do you think, Danny? Um... I don't know. Maybe like it depends on the type of. Oh, I think like, I think kids. you know. You're smiling an awful lot. I think you well, know. People that are just like funny without that, like don't try to be funny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say Keystone Sanders. You know, is funny. Just everything he does, he's. I can't even. Exp- I can't even. He's say a, he's a funny dude. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna go with Toasty. Toasty's pretty funny. <laughs> Who's John, that? John Paterno. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, sometimes it's good, guys, to joke around 
and, and yeah. have fun and smile and laugh and still work your tails off. But there's nothing wrong with keeping it chill, you know, on the football field, you know, water break, somebody cracks a joke and you're laughing, high five, get back on the field, right? It's great. Exactly. Great. Awesome. Both very hard working too. And they just bring like funny and joy to practice. Good. That great friends on the team. It's good to smile. Good, good to smile when it, you're going through all the work that you're going through. Number, okay, second question. Who's the leader that when Coach Guerrero has a message to send the whole team, that one of these guys or multiple guys send it out to the team? Maybe it could be on an Instagram message or a group chat or whatever it is. Who echoes out the message in your program? No, right, man? Oh, yeah, Chris Mozika, I would say. Oh, Chris yeah, does. Chris the linebacker? Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's the guy that rallies the troops around and hey. Always running the group chat. Okay, good. What what do you guys use for a platform? We use GroupMe. Group me. Not with all the players use GroupMe, but coach will generally use Google Classroom a lot. Can you tell when a player looks at it and doesn't respond? I think so. Yeah, right, Ben. It gives I you... don't know. I I think you can see who looks at it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's yeah. cool. So that's how you guys stay in touch with everybody, right? Yes. Cool. Good, good, good. Third question. Great to be back to normal, guys. You haven't had a normal off-season workouts uh, since probably your senior year. For two years with the COVID, you know, the pods, the mask, enough of that. Tell me how great it was to be around everybody and back to normal in in the off-season. Awesome. Love it. It's like Last couple of years, we've gone little pods in the weight rooms where the most you have is eight guys, and the energy never really gets to what it was like. But where now we have 30 guys in the weight room and 30 guys running sprints on the gym floor. So we get the music jumping, and it's always a good time. Good. It's so much more fun. Benny? I, I would agree because, like, last year we would have to split up into a yeah. bunch of different groups and all lift at, like, different times of the day. Like, there were people that would go home from school – and then have to come back and lift at like five o'clock instead of right after school because you had to get those little pods in every time. Mm -hmm. And especially I feel when you have more people, you have more energy because everybody gives in a little bit of energy and it just keeps bouncing off of everybody. And then, you know, you really get in the football mood. You start smiling when you're sweating <laughs> and you're just working hard. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that, those pods were – I, I mean, I just wanted to rip up those masks, throw it out, and never talk about it again, ever. Yeah. It's great to see guys. You know, it's good to see them sweat and, and you know, bond in, in the offseason. Question four. I know what Coach Guerrero's expectations are and his, and his staff, but what are the expectations from you guys? What's the expectations for this season at Wall? I'd say our expectations – as of right now, is not so much of the season, but expectations of everybody else is that everybody's always working 100% and holding themselves accountable. Yeah. Looking forward into the season, you know, state championship and then championship at Rutgers. That'd That's be, all that we're looking forward to. That would be you know, sweet. So we try to do it well as we win. So we're not looking to do anything else but win. You're, exactly. you, you're used to winning, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, you are. Great, great. So expectations just are the same. They're not changing. I like that. Last one. Tell me why it's special to be playing at Wall football under Coach Guerrero. Start with you, Billy. Why is it's it special, group, Coach Guerrero? Like, I've been – it's all so connected. Like, ever since I've been in the AYF program, it was in, like, fifth grade. I've known all the high school players who the studs. They've always been going to the high school camps, and it's such a tight-knit group. Everybody knows each other, and everybody loved each other, and they all want to see everybody have the, do the best for themselves, you know? Yeah. It's Benny. Awesome yep, yeah, great point. Great point. Benny, end it right here. Tell me, why is it special to play for Coach Guerrero at Wall High School? Um, I mean, even though Wall is like a relatively big town, I feel like it's a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody likes everybody everybody's w willing to put their body through all the work that they yeah. have to just man next to them. It's a special type of connection we have here that I don't know if you'd be able to find it in other places. Guys, you are very lucky to have coach Guerrero as a head football coach. And he was bragging to me that, that 
you guys are going to run power. And I know I'm looking at two dudes right here that are going to be the main focal point probably in that power game. Coach Guerrero is a tough guy. He's, he's um, you know, what you see is what you get. I mean, he's a straight shooter, cares about his program. Um, you're going to love b- being coached by him. Um, and, and he's a tough guy. And and a guy like him likes power. I know Coach Gal, you likes power. You guys are going to run power um, and, and, and have fun, too, and have fun, too, while you're doing it. So, guys, I want to thank you for coming on the show. That wasn't too bad. Eight to ten minutes, I promise you, it would be a real quick one. If you guys need anything this year, contact me at the Shore Football Report, all right? You got a lot to look forward to this year, and I heard nothing but great things about you, too. All right. All right? Thanks for having us. Best of luck, guys. I'll talk to you okay. soon. Have a good rest Bye. of your day.